Tuesday night's killing spree at a Pennsylvania health club. Authorities were led to the shooter's online blog where he documented his thoughts in the months leading up to what he called his project. And then last night, George Sedini's own videos surfaced on YouTube. My objective is to be real and to learn to be emotional and to, you know, to be able to emotionally connect with people. Because when I'm 10 to 20 years older than she is, you know, she has to feel good about this thing. And the only way to, around that, you know, is, is to work on this. Joining us now is Dr. Michael Wellner, a top forensic psychiatrist. Good morning to you, Michael. Good morning. First of all, I look at that video and I think he looks like a regular guy. I know you always hear that, but it's surprising because it's not what you expect. Well, that's one of the first things you learn about forensic psychiatry is how much the people that you interview look exactly like you. You expect them to be monsters because they're built up and, and actually they're, they're quite ordinary. And it's his ordinariness that it's at the heart of his committing an attention-seeking crime because that's what this is. Crime doesn't pay, as your first segment showed, unless you're a mass shooter because mm. it's all about getting notoriety. But then you wonder what, what led him to this moment. And when you hear his words on that video, it sounds to me like he's someone who was just desperate but unable to connect emotionally with people. Well, you know, there are a lot of people who are desperate to connect e emotionally, and we don't have to worry about their becoming violent. What distinguishes the mass shooter is that sexual rejection is such a powerful force in this person's life that at some point, giving up on ever resolving that attaching himself, and it is invariably a man, to the idea of my failed masculinity mm. is going to be resolved by my being destructive on a big scale. I get to be famous, I get to show power, and the very people that I can't connect with sexually are going to see me as some kind of a potent figure. And th for, for whatever reason, uh, the, the roles that get put forward about masculine success and power and destruction don't apply to women. And that's why we only see this crime in men. And shooters. invariably, it is a crime of sexual rejection. Let's look at some of the quotes from his blog, which are quite telling about his personality. He writes, why do this to young girls? Just read below. I kept a running log that includes my thoughts and actions after I saw this project was going to drag on. Clearly, he wants publicity for his actions. Clearly, he wants people to know what he's plotting. Is this his way of saying somebody see this and stop me? No. This is his way of knowing that someone is going to find this later on, and he gets to package himself in a way that he wants us to consume. But mass it seems shooting, like for, for months he was putting it the, out there like saying, here's your chance to stop me, no, I'm going to no. do this, I'm going to do what? this. Mass shooting is the only crime that we have available in this country, and it's analogous to suicide bombing in the Islamic world, where more attention is given to how you're going to appear after the fact than even plotting the crime itself. This is all about attention for him, which is exactly why his videos, his writings shouldn't be exposed. They should be relegated yeah. and he should be remembered as a sexual reject because that's where all of this derived from. Yeah, and then in the next quote, you see that quote, many of the young girls here look so beautiful as to not be human, very edible. What's he telling himself and others about the victims? You cannot kill a stranger unless you dehumanize them. That's how it is in battle. That's how it is with mass shooters. People dehumanize others, and it enables them to do something so violent and destructive. And if you look at the next quote, his perception of right and wrong, I mean, we don't need to look at the quote to know that it was messed up, but listen to this. He references his pastor. This guy teaches and convinced me that you can commit mass murder and then still go to heaven. Ask him. Is he thinking that he's in heaven? He's going to heaven? Well, you know, that's, that's a very sensitive question that I think people in their churches should be discussing. And that is, is redemption something that you automatically get? Or is it something that you earn by repentance? That's an active dialogue for church because one of the tensions that's very present in this case as well as in others when religion is involved is you have someone who is either influenced or living a sexually repressed lifestyle with some connection to religion, which encourages that restraint, coupled with a society that's very encouraging of high sexual activity and masculinity defined mm -hmm. by how sexually active you are. He looks back on his life and he sees this incompatibility. He blames his religion. So that tension is natural in free societies. What 
is part of his discussion that I think really does deserve closer attention is, where does redemption come from? Does it come from a pastor or is it God's decision? Because I encounter that as a forensic psychiatrist yeah. all the time. That's a, a, a killer heady, will say, heady topic. A killer will say, I've said I'm sorry, forgive me. Is it really that simple? We should pray for the victims. Should we pray for him? Has he earned it? That's a discussion because we're not showing cameras in Mercy Hospital. Right. We're showing cameras of him. All right, Michael Wellner, thank you. Thank you so much.